Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a potential solution to one of the mysteries in the universe. The strange galaxy that you see somewhere right here. It's actually really hard to see. A galaxy that's around 320 million light years away from us and a galaxy that seems to possess a lot of mass on the inside, yet not enough stars. A galaxy that's also known as Dragonfly 44, named after the telescope known as Dragonfly that discovered it. But what exactly was the mystery, and why is this important now, and what's the solution? So let's start with identifying types of galaxies. And actually this is something that I really love doing in Space Engine because as soon as you leave the Milky Way galaxy and start looking around, you'll realize how many more galaxies there are in the universe. There are a lot of different types of galaxies, some of them are more visible than others, and some of them are more mysterious than others. It just so happens that because of the advances in the telescope technology, we've started to discover a lot of these so-called ultra-diffuse galaxies. Which unfortunately I can't really show you here, mostly because they're very very difficult to see, and will probably take me hours and hours just to find at least one of them. But generally they all sort of look like this. Extremely dim and very difficult to see, yet they possess a lot of mass on the inside. And as you can probably imagine, today we believe that most of this mass is essentially dark matter. And in some cases it's been suggested that over 99.9% .9 of the whole mass is dark matter, with only 0.1% being the stars, the visible matter. And although we have discovered a few of these ultra-diffuse galaxies so far, even one relatively close to us actually, there was one specifically, discovered about 4 years ago, that did actually raise a lot of eyebrows. The galaxy known as Dragonfly 44. And here's why it's called Dragonfly. Simply because it sort of resembles an eye of a dragonfly, and it's essentially a series of commercial cameras all connected together, creating this beautiful and very sensitive telescope. And the main strength of this telescope is in seeing these very difficult to see galaxies. So it's essentially a way for us to kind of search for more of these dark matter dominated galaxies and to possibly try to solve the mysteries related to dark matter. But back to Dragonfly 44. So back in 2016 the scientists realized that something did make sense here. This galaxy seemed to possess approximately the same mass as our own Milky Way galaxy Yet, in terms of the number of stars and luminous matter, visible matter, it seemed to possess thousands and thousands of times less. Which didn't really make sense because it suggested that the galaxy contained about 10,000 times more dark matter than visible mass. Normally, in a galaxy like the Milky Way galaxy, this number is closer to like 10, maybe 100 maximum 300. And even when we find a galaxy with about 300 times uh, more mass in dark matter than visible mass, it already sort of creates a mystery for us. But in this case the number was 10,000. 10,000 times more mass in dark matter than visible matter. And so for about 4 years now this was a really big mystery. And so naturally the question here was, was this some sort of a mistake? Or was this galaxy indeed unique and just something that we've never seen before? Naturally, for scientists at least, the more likely answer was that we made a mistake somewhere. We probably miscalculated or didn't really see something we should have been seeing. And even though finding anomalous galaxies and finding mysteries is not really a question here, it's still important to double check your work and to make sure that whatever we found is really there. But before we continue, so let's actually also talk about the differences between the Milky Way and Dragonfly 44, and also how we measure the idea of dark matter in these galaxies. So if this right here is the Milky Way, Dragonfly 44 may resemble something like this. So as you can see, it's kind of difficult to see it, it's very diffuse, there are maybe a few globular clusters here, which are these larger spots you see. And normally a typical globular cluster that contains anywhere from a few thousand to possibly even many hundreds of millions of stars is how we measure different properties of galaxies. So for example, over the years we've discovered that there is a relationship between the total mass of a galaxy and the number of clusters, globular clusters, present in a galaxy. The more clusters, the more mass. And so the original measurements of the galaxy known as Dragonfly 44 suggested that it had about 75 to possibly 80 different global clusters in it, very similar to the Milky Way galaxy. Yet only about 100 million stars were showing here, and we know that it's at least a thousand or even more than a thousand times less than what we have in the Milky Way galaxy. And so normally if we look at a galaxy and we can find the total number of global clusters, and we then compare this to the total luminosity of the galaxy, 
and try to estimate how many stars this galaxy contains, we can usually figure out how much dark matter it has. And so these globular clusters are really important for various studies. We also measure the speed of different stars moving in the galaxy, and we also measure, for example, the dispersion velocity of these stars, but today those are usually not as easy to calculate as the number of clusters. And so this is essentially what the new paper, new study that you can find in the description below, did as well. But they use different telescopes. They use the WM Keck Observatory, the Gemini North Observatory, and also collected the data from the Hubble telescope. And they combine all of this into these composite images to try to investigate how many global clusters they'll find in these images. And well, it turns out maybe we miscalculated the clusters. It seems that only about 20 clusters were confirmed in this galaxy, suggesting of course that the mysterious dark matter galaxy may not be as massive to begin with, a lot less massive than we originally thought. In this case, we have to change it just a little bit to make it look sort of like this. So essentially it contained around 20 different global clusters, making it dramatically less massive and still possessing a lot of dark matter, but not 10,000 times more, closer to about 300 times more. And I just realized that this made the galaxy even more invisible than before. So we're gonna have to remove the Milky Way galaxy because it's blocking everything. Okay, so what does this make this galaxy then? Well, it makes it a typical ultra-diffuse galaxy. A galaxy that possesses a lot of dark matter, possibly even 300 times more than the typical star matter, but it doesn't make it an anomaly or a strange galaxy that we can't explain. At least according to this recent study. There may be still follow-ups and there might be still recalculations of the total number of these globular clusters in the future, although the way it looks right now, based on all of these observations from different telescopes, the mystery may have been solved. It's a regular ultra-diffuse galaxy, and doesn't seem to possess anything too extreme about it. Now, obviously there are still quite a lot of mysteries about these galaxies. We still don't really understand how they're created. We still don't really understand why the mass difference between dark matter and visible matter is so dramatic in these galaxies. And we really don't get why certain clusters, like for example, the Coma cluster right here, seem to possess a lot more of these galaxies and a lot more dark matter than certain other clusters closer to us. In other words, there are still quite a lot of mysteries and still a lot of unanswered questions. Just not the question we previously had. It doesn't seem to be an anomaly at all. And also there are some other unanswered questions, even in regards to the global clusters. For example, we know that there is a relationship between the total mass of a galaxy and the number of clusters, but we don't really understand what the relationship is or how it's developed. We think it's because of the amount of different galactic collisions, which are usually between dwarf galaxies, and a lot of these dwarf galaxies eventually turn into global clusters, but the answer is not very clear right now. Either way, for now that's kind of all we know about the mysterious Dragonfly 44, and also for now this seems to have solved one mystery in the universe. But once we discover more about the galaxy, about dark matter, or about something else related to these ultra-diffuse galaxies, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, I'll see you tomorrow. Make sure to subscribe, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description below. And also I just realized I really should have been wearing this shirt because turns out this shirt has something green in it, so it does look like I'm semi-transparent. Which actually looks really cool when I think about it, maybe I should just buy a green shirt and wear that all the time. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.